Hi, Joanne Banco from Let's Go Sew here for today to show you a strip pieced patchwork project. So what I've done is I've made a, a placemat and I've started with two and a half inch wide strips. You can use leftovers. Like I said, it's kind of a scrappy project, so dig into your stash. Um, you can use leftovers from collections. Maybe you've got a jelly roll, something like that. So that's what I used. I had some leftover strips from, from a jelly roll. And it's a, done in a log cabin style version. The, the block is actually a log cabin style, but it's not your traditional log cabin where you have the lights and the darks and you know all of the, the even amount. It's, it's kind of something that you could just you know put together different pieces. I guarantee it's gonna look good when you're done. You could try out you know, the layout and see how, how you look, like the way it looks. So what I started with was a map. And I've actually created one of these for you. Um, when you visit the website, you can download this for free. And it'll show you the layout that I did for the whole um, center block and then for adding the borders. Now, I had enough fabric to make matching borders for these two sets. Um, and then I used something contrasting for this. But you can use different pieces for that as well. Again, it doesn't, doesn't matter. Once I've decided, though, the pieces that I want to use, I'm going to, um, again, like I said, have a map here. So I've created a little bit of a guide. And I've just taken snippets of the fabric and put it in the position so that I can follow that as I'm, as I'm going along. I just used a, a glue stick and tacked them in place. I'm going to use that as a guide when I, when I go over to the machine. We've got a blank one here for you to download from, from the website. Let's talk about the rest of the supplies you need. So we've got our strips. We've got our map here. Um, we're going to use a fusible fleece batting. And this is probably one of the keys to this whole project and one of the secrets. Because this is not quilted. It's pieced, but it's not quilted. You certainly could add quilting if you want to. But when you add that fusible fleece to that patchwork layer, it seals everything in place. And there really is no need to, to do any quilting on that unless you want to. I'm going to have to sew this right sides together and leave a little opening. And when when I leave that opening, naturally that opening has to be closed. So I like to do it really quick and easy with a, um, a fusible webbing tape, and I'll just slip that into my opening, and that'll make it really easy. You could hand sew it, and you could top stitch it as well. So let's slide over to the machine and um, get started on the, on the patchwork. All right, I'm going to just get my little cheater glasses on here. I have my serger set up for a four thread standard balanced seam. And when you use the um, serger, it pretty much forms almost a quarter, perfect quarter of an inch. Now, again, if you want to be really precise this, with this, you would do it probably like a traditional quilter. I am a not traditional quilter. I like to find quick, easy ways to do it. And the serger is the perfect, perfect option. So take a look at this on the wrong side, how neat and how clean that is. Again, look at that seam. It's a almost a perfect quarter inch. And that's all we really need is a consistent seam allowance all the way through. The other nice thing about this is it makes it so durable and so washable that it's going to be um, something that you can throw in the wash and not worry about. From the right side, it looks nice and smooth and even. So let's go ahead and get started with the patchwork. So I've got the first uh, center block and the first side block and the first strip sewn. Now it's time for me to take piece number four. And I've actually labeled them. Again, I'm going to check my little guide. Piece number four goes here, and you're going to sew everything with the raw edge right along the blade, but you're not really going to be trimming, because if you trim, you're going to make that seam allowance smaller. So you just want to skim that edge, and if you have any leftover little fuzzies, that's going to trim that right off. Okay. Now, um, I'm going to clip this, and I'm going to um, clip those threads in order to get that, that next piece there, which is going to be piece number five. And piece number five is going to go on the bottom. But while I do this, I want to tell you that if you were doing multiple, uh, multiple blocks, multiple uh, placemats, you certainly could do all of your piece one and two together at the same time, piece number one, two, and three together at the same time, and keep that order going. And you could just butt up the next piece to the first one that you stitched, and the next one, the next one, the next one, and you don't have to clip until you're all done. So I'm wasting a little bit of thread and maybe wasting a little time here, but that's because I'm only doing one little sample for you. Okay, so again, now we've got to open that out each time. And again, if you want to be fussy, you could head over to the iron, you could press that. But this is scrappy style patchwork piecing, so I'm just going to finger press that down. And you can see I've gone in a counterclockwise 
direction. So my next piece now, I've done one, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna do six. So this is piece number six. I've labeled mine. You don't have to go to that extreme if you don't want to, but I like to keep myself on the straight and narrow path and make sure that I don't make any mistakes. So that just makes it easy for me. Numbering it and following my guide are gonna be my um, keys to success here. And naturally, I would want to do that if I've got, I'm using the same pieces and I want everything to be identical because it really is easy to get a little bit turned upside down. Okay, so that is number six. Number seven goes on next. That's going to go up here at the top. Now, I want to tell you just a little bit, as you go along, you may find that you've got um, a little bit longer of a piece or a little bit shorter of a piece. Don't worry about that now because we're not making a quilt with blocks that have to match up exactly. We're just, you know, we're making one um, simple block that we're turning into a, a placemat, quick and easy. And when we get to the point where we're ready to um, turn that into the, the placemat, we can square it all up and even it up. So we've got that is number seven. Okay, I'm going to do eight. And you can see the pieces get bigger as you go along. And like I said, you can um, feel free to do this in a, in a little bit more of a controlled manner and press these seams as you go with the iron and keep that nice and smooth. But the other advantage of the serger is that the seam itself lays very, very flat when it's done. So look at that. It's almost like effortless for me to smooth that seam allowance and have it, and have it lay flat. Okay, so I had one more to do, but I'm gonna go ahead and just pick up a block that I've already done. You've already seen the back side of that one. And this one is completed except for the very last border. So again, I had the opportunity to use, you know, the same fabric for that border. It's nice if you could do that. It kind of gives it a little bit of symmetry. But I want to show you another technique now on the final borders. I didn't cut these pieces to size. I could, but this is just another way that you could do the whole block if you wanted to, or just do these, these outer last pieces like this. I'm gonna sew those last two borders with an extra length, and I'm gonna uh, just clip that a little bit at the end. Just snip that, leave myself a little, a little bit extra. Okay, so you could see I would have extra length at, at each end. I would now smooth that out, press that really good, do the second size, and then go over to my uh, rotary cutter, use my rotary cutter, my ruler, my mat, and perfectly even out those edges. So when you're done with that, you're gonna have a nice, neat block like this, ready to turn into your placemat. So what are the next step? The next step is to cut the fusible fleece and fuse it to the wrong side. Now, I wanna give you, a, you know, this is all about easy, so I wanna give you a tip for doing this. Cut yourself an oversized fleece piece. Go ahead and fuse it. Be careful that your iron doesn't touch, you know, the glue part that's sticking out, but fuse it lightly. Then take it over to your mat, because now we're getting in the final stages where we want everything nice and neat and even and square. So trim off all of that excess batting, and then cut your lining piece so that it's the, um, the same size as your placemat, and then go back and trim off just a hair. So I trim off an eighth of an inch of one long edge and an eighth of an inch of one short edge. That's gonna make this just a little bit smaller. And then now, believe it or not, we're gonna be able to finish this whole thing. And because it's only a little bit smaller, we can ease that length in. What that's gonna do for you is, is when you turn this right side out, and this is true with many, many sewing projects, there is something called turn of the cloth. And turn of the cloth means that when you turn a thicker side to a thinner side, it, um, it shortens up a little bit. So by having that uh, a little bit smaller on the underside, it's gonna make sure that that stays tucked underneath. Okay, I wanna do the other short edge because I wanna show you how this is finished. And I think you'll agree, fast, easy, fun, quick, 
This is a great way for quilters to use their serger to do piecing, crafters to use their serger to do patchwork, and those of you that maybe have our uh, garment sewers, and you know you use your serger so often for finishing your seam allowances, you know, using the rolled hem, doing all those things. See how I'm just stretching that a little bit to fit? You use it for all those different things, but you don't necessarily think of it for using on an entire project. My sewing machine is tucked away right now. I have not even had to use it, and I won't need to use it for this whole project. So now, this is an important part. When I get to the two long sides, I'm going to tuck this seam allowance towards the lining. And I'm going to raise the presser foot. I could do it with the presser foot lever, but a little trick here is to just raise that with your finger and get that thick seam allowance tucked fully under the foot. Get that going there. And when I do these two long sides, by having that seam allowance folded towards the lining side, it's going to, again, force that lining to turn to the back side. Now, I use just muslin for my uh, you know, flip side of my placemat. If you're going to make it reversible, you can use I don't know, something a little prettier, something a little bit more, more fun. Okay, so see that? That's all done. Now, we're going to do the second side just a little bit different. We're still going to tuck those corners. I'm going to get that underneath. Okay, and I am going to sew to the center, and I'm going to stop. So I'm going to stop by actually raising my presser foot, pulling a little slack in that needle thread, and then sliding that off. Go ahead and surge, and then I'm going to jump back on about a hand's width away, and I'm going to use that for my turning. Okay. So it's very quick to finish this last side. You would turn that right side out. Let's hop over to the table, show you the finished one on both the right side and the wrong side. You've got a beautiful, neat finish, all nice, pretty patchwork, all done with your serger. Visit the website for free instructions.